Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. Now, the second form of socialism is socialism as a government, right? This is usually called a social democracy. This form of government uses capitalism as an economic force, but it tries to, you know, make it nice with socialist regulations. The government is to come in and regulate, control a private capitalist economy. That's right, an economy governed by private enterprises owned by private citizens who trade with one another in an institution called the market, where they buy and sell their labor, their work, their products, their services. That's right, it's a capitalist economy, private enterprise, markets, but one in which the government is brought in. Some people mean socialism by that. And they mean particularly that the government is brought in in a, in a certain way. Number one, the government is to regulate what the private enterprises do so that they are less self-serving, profit-oriented, and are more socially concerned. That's why they minimum wage is something socialists always supported. Many of them want there to be limits on how much prices can be raised by corporations or how much profits can be earned by them. And the second reason socialists want the government to come in is to redistribute wealth because capitalism has this tendency to concentrate wealth in very few hands and deprive the mass of people. So the socialists want the government to come in using taxes and using government spending to do a bit of redistribution, to equalize a system that turns unequal very quickly. So, look, trying to use social responsibility as a way to regulate capitalism is like trying to use a sandcastle to regulate a hurricane, right? Like, the hurricane is still in control and is going to do whatever it wants to do. The bottom line for private en enterprises is always the accumulation of wealth. And if we add social responsibility and social justice to the mix, it's just going to make those movements into a product. And it's not like we haven't seen that before, right? I mean, look at what Pepsi has done with the growing Black Lives Matter movement last year. They used Kendall Jenner to try to fucking sell you Pepsi, you know? And not just that, but Nike co-opted Colin Kaepernick's message to sell their shoes. Now, sure, conservatives burned Nikes in protest, but they still had to go out 
and buy new Nikes just <laughs> to set them on fire. That's right. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, even outrage was turned into a product to improve the bottom line. Now, capitalism isn't the economy of social responsibility, right? Would a socially responsible economy be looking for new ways to use slavery to benefit itself for the sake of larger profits? The answer is no. No, it fucking wouldn't. That's crazy, right? But in America, the largest capitalist nation around, we have a chasm of income divide, right? More, more people in debt of, of all kinds and stagnant wages. And we offer internships too, which <laughs> That's just white collar slavery right there is all that is. <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves. Now, social Democrats throughout history have gone out to use the principles of socialism to regulate capitalists, but time and time again, they've given into capitalistic viewpoints. In the early mm -hmm. 1900s, the social Democrats of Europe yep. gave into nationalistic pressures to support the war efforts, right? It, they, they were basically slandered, saying that if you don't support the war, then you're, you're not a good German, you're not a good Fr a French, or and things of that sort. And not only did that mean that more working class men were sent to die for the causes of the rich, but the military is one of the biggest money makers for a capitalist nation. Hence why in America, it, we give them the socialist treatment here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the American military is the biggest socialist secret in this capitalist nation, right? If you're in the American military as a career soldier, you can get your housing covered, medical assistance taken care of, your education paid off, and when you retire, you get a pretty damn good pension. Now, the military is all about social safety nets if you stay in for the long haul. But if you're a veteran, they give you a hat and a greeting card and tell you to find some bootstraps to pick yourself up by. But, you know, thank you for your service and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue with social democracies is that in an attempt to play nice with capitalism, they wind up fighting for bare minimum and compromises because capitalism is still in control. In the 70s, uh, the European Social Democrats started lining up with neoliberal economic policies. Right? These ideas don't help the working class or average citizens. They just worked with capitalists to put a price tag on social responsibility. And social democratic countries like Finland didn't really give true socialist ideas a fair fighting chance. A couple of years ago, they haphazardly attempted universal basic income for half of the unemployed population and deemed the experiment a failure because it neither increased nor decreased happiness. But a concept like UBI can't work if it's given to a small portion of the population because the idea is a universal basic income which means that everybody has to get it in order for it to actually successfully work. The real issue with social democracy is that everything hinges on electoral politics, right? If, 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 the, if socialism can be the government, then capitalism can be regulated and the workers have their big day in the sun. Much like a capitalist democracy, elections in a social democracy are bought out by the capitalists making it an ineffective system to implement socialist principles to, to regulate something like a gluttonous beast that is capitalism. Oh, and FYI, this is not me telling people to not vote. I think you should go out and vote, but this is me saying that, that that's not the be all end all, right? Just, just casting your vote doesn't end your duty as a citizen to any nation, regardless of what economic ideology you believe in. It means that we have to be more involved and less complacent and apathetic to drive change in, for the betterment of mankind. So fucking go vote. <laughs> 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 but former presidential candidate uh, of uh, the Socialist Party of America once said, voting for socialism is not socialism any more than a menu is a meal. But putting a socialist in office, especially in capitalist countries, 
won't get us socialist principles or put forth the ide ideologies of human dignity and cooperation that socialism preaches. Voting for socialism doesn't work without the presence of a strong labor movement and an empowered proletariat. <laughs> and in fact, this was the idea and momentum behind <laughs> the Bernie Sanders campaign. Yeah, America's, America's grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> Now, as we all know, Bernie ran with the Democratic Party and got cheated out of the election in 2016. But he did spark a movement that contributed to the fact that young people no longer associate the word socialism with, you know, fucking satanic hellfire engulfing this Christian nation. <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> yeah, no, hopefully. We might be wrong. There's like a small percentage chance. <laughs> But ideas like Medicare for all, low or free public colleges, and even universal basic income are starting to become more and more popular in a capitalist country like America. But then in 2020, he did it again. He ran with the same party that screwed him over to begin with. And a lot of these corporate candidates from Joe Biden to Elizabeth Warren to Kamala Harris were all parroting Bernie Sanders talking points. But then they'd go back to CNN, Kamala Harris did this a whole bunch, where they'd go back to CNN to clarify what they meant, right? They'd go up and be like, look, I was very confused about the question of, of, of whether I am for or against Medicare for all. What a confusing question, you know? And, and then you have the Telemundo reporter who has a very strange but beautiful accent. So it's difficult to understand that. Or, or they would just say that they were saying it to say it, right? White lies of helping black and brown and low income communities. Now this allowed corporate Democrats, which are most Democrats to pick up Bernie's rhetoric and use it as a way to bolster pro-capitalist, pro-corporate, anti-worker legislation. Social Democrats, that's, and that's what Bernie Sanders is. He's a social Democrat like Bernie Sanders can't reform capitalistic parties or economic systems from within. Once you're in, they, they, they just fucking, they get you in and then they consume you, you know? You know how they, like, you have to eat something to gain its power? That's what, that's what they do, they consume you. <laughs> they stole Bernie's power, they stole his essence. And then they tried to give it to Joe Biden, but I don't think it's working. <laughs> Oh man, it is, his body is Lost just drifting cause. it like a fucking bad organ, you know, like it is not working. But that's what they do. You, they, your words start losing that revolutionary sheen and then you get the dull coat of platitudes put on you, right? <laughs> things like, yeah, like things like Medicare for all become access to choices in healthcare, which is fucking not Medicare for all. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. Now, Eugene Debs uh, of the Socialist Party of America did try to reform the Democrats from within from the mid to late 1800s. He was uh, part of the House of Representatives in the state of Indiana. And he basically discovered that Democrats are, and they have been, and kind of always will be, the party of private interests and corporations. Right, way back in the 18, uh, 1800s, he fought for, for railroad uh, employees, or railroad workers to uh, essentially get them paid when they get hurt on the job. It passed through the House and then Senate Democrats killed that bill. Later on, he goes on to form the Socialist Party of America. Uh, and basically he was going up against the Democrats because he wanted a party for the working class people and once that happened, it was the Democrats that approved the Espionage Act and the Federal Reserve Act to attack socialists. And it was a Democrat that worked with Republicans on the Taft-Hartley Act to gut unions. Now, the positive in terms of electoral politics and socialism is that socialists are winning, right? Since 2017, there has been a rise of socialist candidates that have won various local and national elections. One of the most famous ones is Shama Savant. She's a socialist uh, city council member in Seattle that has basically fought off Jeff Bezos' reach into that city. <laughs> yeah. 
And this is how crazy it got that Jeff Bezos spent over a million dollars in December of 2019 to try to get rid of one socialist city council member. One million dollars to get rid of one socialist. And he fucking failed. He failed. <laughs> That's chump change to him. Yeah. yeah, it is chump change to him. But, you know, I feel like that was the city of Seattle handing his ass. You know, it was like shipped Absolutely. and handled by the people of Seattle and delivered his loss in less than two days. Oh, I thought that joke was clever. Yeah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Denied. I, was, I know you guys were just like, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's now, there's also folks like AOC, right? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the squad. And the difference between AOC and Shama Savant is that AOC tried the Bernie Sanders social democrat method, while Shama Savant ran as it, within the socialist alternative party. She embraced the term socialist while, you know, Bernie and AOC just kind of shook its hand a little bit. It was a firm handshake though. It's a firm handshake. And by the way, this isn't me saying that I hate Bernie or AOC, but rather that they can do a little bit better and fight a little bit harder while embracing the title of socialist. The, the people will get behind you if you continue to keep fighting for them. Here's the thing, when you hinge revolutionary change and social responsibility on electoral politics, I think it's doomed to fail, right? Politicians will legislate and manipulate on behalf of big corporate interests, especially when they're controlled by corporations like they are in capitalist America. And we've seen this time and time again, right? Unless the working class consumers start not consuming and affect the bottom line of these corporations, that's when, that's when social responsibility becomes important, right? Then they can send out a nice tweet about how much they care, <laughs> right? Hashtag care, you guys, hashtag care. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on wh when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.